Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90. I've decided to try to upgrade to 0 0.90. This has caused some problems. There are pluses and minuses to this upgrade, but uh, we've been having a lot of minuses recently and this will solve some of them. For instance, we had a little bug with the procedural tanks, right? And that was annoying me to no end. Well, now when we dump the fuel from the procedural tank, it costs 301 units, and uh, if we size it up without any fuel, it still costs a proper amount of funds. So now, when it gets recovered, of course, it's going to actually be worthwhile, and it's not going to be too cheap in the VAB. So that's, that's a positive, but there's a lot more that uh, will be positive. For instance, uh, before, I wasn't able to use uh, procedural wings. Uh, for some reason, Procedural Wings was bugged in uh, my previous installation in 0.25. So that's why one of the reasons why I wasn't making many planes was because I couldn't add Procedural Wings. It was just totally bugged. But now, if we uh, uh, put a cockpit and let's say some... I know I'm not, I should do it in the SPH, but let me just uh, quickly uh, demonstrate what was going on before and why this is now okay. Uh, first of all, we'll just do normal procedural wings. What was happening before was uh, I couldn't even uh, put it on. It would just bug when I tried to put it on. And uh, beyond that, of course, the key thing with procedural wings is that you can shape them however you like. And that is sort of important if you want to get the right look, especially with firm aerospace. Right? Firm aerospace doesn't like the stock wing parts very much but uh, it's good for procedural wings and especially B9 procedural wings which I have also added in so and they weren't working in the uh, with uh, 0.25 and all that either but uh, yep so now we can use B9 procedural wings and make really nifty wings sort of like so right if you haven't used B9 procedural uh, wings I highly recommend them and of course you can even color them so if we go to surface top uh, change the material increase opacity and uh, you know stuff like this if you have uh, curb paint I think it was that allows you to paint the bodies I don't know if they're compatible with the space plane parts but yeah, you could uh, really make nifty craft like this. I don't have curb paint in here. I probably should throw it in now that I have uh, the wings paintable like this. But uh, we'll get to that some other time. So that was one prior annoyance that I had that I wanted to fix. And that allowed me to create much better aircraft. Um, I'm so much more used to dealing with the procedural wings and shaping the wings the way I like. And so, yep, that is a thing. But there are some drawbacks, and there are other benefits, but let's get to the drawbacks quickly. Okay, so here is our base, and for the most part it looks alright, right? right? Uh, except you might notice a very specific issue. And aside from the low frame rates, which are a thing, but actually that's uh, the Kerbal Journal Reinforcement is trying to stabilize, stabilize physics, so it's not too bad. But yeah, of course there's low frame rates, but... Hmm, that thing just sort of hopped and went back down. I'm a little bit worried about that. But, yeah, uh, functionality-wise, at least our Kerbals are in there. They've got food, water, and oxygen and everything. But these, right, they're obviously, they've grown. They've grown. The inline stabilizers have decided to grow to 2.5 meters for some reason. I don't know why, it probably has something to do with tweak scale, but uh, any attempt to restore tweak scale to its previous state really didn't work, it didn't help, it didn't help. So um, basically every time I used the uh, inline reaction wheels that were really small, they have grown to 2.5 meters. That doesn't mean we can't use them at the regular scale right now, I mean when I pull it in the VAB, it's, it's regular small size. but for some reason they've decided to grow and that's that's unsightly obviously um, but it is not a tremendous functional problem it does 
make some of the craft very ugly though and so we're going to have to replace some of it but I don't think it does any damage to the base particularly uh, this is pretty much intact uh, now with the MKS and OKS modules uh, 0.90 version had some of them missing and I guess uh, they, they, they're they just not supposed to be there but in order to keep my craft intact so that they don't disappear I had to add those back in so I've added some some modules that are not supposed to be in 0 0.90 and I've put them in in order to keep my craft so that's that's a dicey idea now this is not the limit of the problem uh, if, if it was then that would be a minor issue uh, by, by the way the moon master and the the gold bugs seem to be alright but if I turn around fully uh, well let's let's try and go to it okay gold bug little tug the moon master helmet miner is fine right now so this is where we have other problems yeah we, we seem to be missing something here, right? First of all, the inline reaction wheel is, has obviously grown. But there's, there's an attachment point issue with the, with the infernal robotics parts that has led this thing to, to be here, right? There's this huge gap here. And I'm not too sure it is functional. I honestly don't want to turn to it for very long just in case it might suddenly do something. But yeah, our light tower is bugged, and basically any Infernal Robotics parts are somewhat bugged uh, in this new version because Infernal Robotics changed. So, uh, let's go to some of the other examples of that. Okay, so here we are. The Emergency Hab's uh, solar arrays are messed up, and this is again because of the changes to Infernal Robotics. Uh, in fact, if I try and move these, they're very odd. Nice sound effects though. But yeah, this is clearly not working right. Actually, the first time I turned to this, they were just flopping around. It was like it was trying to fly or something. The solar panels are just randomly flopping here and there. So, at least they're sort of stable, I guess, but yeah, that's not great. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably fi you've probably figured out that there is one particular design that used the Infernal Robotics parts that uh, we really want to see intact, and that's the Explorer X, right, with its extendable pylons. It'd be a real shame if that was messed up, so let's turn to that next. As it turns out, it appears to be perfectly fine. Let's just double check that it can move its pylons properly. Yeah, it appears to be be quite all right. Let, let me just do it this way. So that's curious, but thankful, uh, thankfully that is the case. So, uh, also interesting that we seem to have more Delta V here than we used to. Isn't that right? I thought we only barely had enough to possibly make a jewel transfer, but now we seem to have a lot more. And I don't know why. I think it might be that the colonization system modules might have changed mass. I think that there's a different mass to them right now and that might have caused it. I don't think it's the procedural tanks. The They had a cost problem, they didn't have a mass problem. I know that for sure. In any case, they're full of fuel. So, yeah, that is, that is good. Alright, so that's positive. But let's check on our stations, which are sort of important. Uh, let's start with the station around Kerbin. We've got everything that we had before except for I think I dumped some near future spacecraft in order to save RAM because we've got new parts in 0.90 for stock 
so I needed to get rid of something in order to keep under the RAM limit. Anyway, Kerbin Station Core seems to be fine. I wouldn't want to test out its solar array, but uh, you know, at least it doesn't have that gap that we saw in the light tower. So yeah, uh, it looks it looks serviceable. It looks like it's functional. Yeah, no problems except that its solar panels aren't really. Let let's let's turn it around so the solar panels aren't going to be facing the sun actually. Okay, there we go. All right, so now fuse box is happy. And let's turn to our main station around the moon. Okay, well, uh, no noticeable problems with the station itself. There's an obvious problem with the with the Mu, uh, half Mu. This is a half Mu fuel refueler, and that's of course the small inline reaction wheel is no longer so small. But at least we don't have a reaction wheel on the rescue pod or the station itself. Of course, if it was the station itself, uh, 2.5 meter wouldn't be a problem anyway. But, yep, the station looks intact. Oddly, didn't have a oversized reaction wheel for this. Actually, this advanced inline stabilizer stays the same. It's only the really small inline reaction wheel that uh, suddenly got expanded for some reason. I have no idea why. Again, I suspect tweak scale, but I can't say for sure. Now, we have another station in orbit. We have the carbonite mining station. And this too seems relatively intact, and in fact completely intact. There, don't, there doesn't seem to be any problem at all with this. I assume that the carbonite processing stuff is still functional the way it was in 0.25. If it isn't, and there are some changes to that, this might be a useless station. Oh, I've got Bob, both Bill and Bob here, wow. Gotta do something with this. Anyway, uh, unfortunately it's not very expandable because it doesn't have... Uh, the, the I made a mistake, the 2.5 meter docking port here is facing the wrong way. Otherwise this would be a much more useful station. But yeah, my bad there. But anyway, we'll leave Bill and Bob. We have the Minma station to check out, and that was a lot more complicated than these two around the moon. Well, I'm not sure all the modules are functional as they should be. I think, I don't know if it was the agricultural hab or something, uh, not agricultural hab, the agricultural module that uh, wasn't in point, uh, 0.90. There was something that uh, was definitely not part of 0 0.90 from the station and so I don't know if it'll all be functional but um, at least all this looks intact as we left it so that's good I guess the last thing to check will be the Duna end because we've got a mini station over there one that was just barely meant to fulfill a contract so let's just make sure and that'll be the last major structure that we need to check up on Okay, well, this doesn't look like it has any problems at all. Um, very straightforward sort of craft, after all. Uh, more of a long-range long range vessel than an actual station. But, yep, uh, the Kerbals are on board. Lots of them, actually. We probably should bring some of them back. And otherwise, there is one more craft around Duna, and that is our little CRT, the survey ship. So let's switch to that. And the CRT looks fine. In fact, uh, strikingly, the inline reaction wheel on the... Is it smaller than it should be? I think the inline reaction wheel on the half moon here is actually smaller than it should be. Uh, yeah, well, anyway, let me not... not try and figure that out but otherwise the CRT seems to be in working order here so that is good news Jedin Kerman who uh, who needs to probably get a little bit more fuel to do some surveys we have some more spots to survey it doesn't show up here though but we do have some more missioning to do around Duna anyway 
so uh, that's that's pretty good. Basically, it's the reaction wheels and some of the infernal robotics parts. Remember, we've upgraded from 0.24 to 0.25 and now to 0.90. So it's a uh, it's a big thing. Now, what I really want to check out is whether the launch I did at the end of the previous episode will work this time. Partly because hopefully I'll handle it better. I I think I was just having a bad aerodynamic day. Uh, just not thinking straight there but hopefully uh, there have been changes to FAR in this version and so this is now FAR 0.14.7 and maybe that will also help so we'll see let me let me restart the whole thing because I've been jumping from craft to craft here and that always makes things a little bit more buggy and so I'll restart the game and then we'll try out that launch again trying to send a docking port over to that asteroid around Minmus and uh, then we can wrangle that asteroid and attach it to the station right so that's the plan so let me restart and I'll get on with that okay so asteroid docking module on the Sparrow 9 and when we take this off we see that this is 22,000 hold on let's, let's dissect this a little bit so 3,000 only? Is that right? Hmm. That's cheaper than I thought it would be. Let me just double check. Let's let's go. I mean, I hate to... Oh, robotic parts is a separate little category here now. Infernal Robotics really changed things there, huh? That's interesting. I didn't expect that. I have other .90 series, and I didn't have a little robotics parts category. I must have a little bit more advanced uh, infernal robotics in this version. But okay, let us hope that that doesn't confuse things. That's that's probably part of why it's buggy. Maybe I should have gone to an older version of infernal robotics. There are m many versions of infernal robotics for 0 .90. Uh, so may, but now that I have it, I, I'm not going to change it. Let's just leave it be. Okay, so let's start with the claw. What claw? claw. Okay, that's 450. The tanks on the side, 400. Okay. And then I guess the rest of it is pretty cheap. This is just a tank. That's just a tank. That's just a tank. They're probably all about uh, 300 each. Uh, maybe, maybe 400 or so. They're very small tanks. Uh, you see, this one is roughly equivalent to this size. Oh, that's 850. Well, it's not too far off, but I'm a little bit worried here. But at least this whole vessel doesn't go into negative values when I dump the fuel out. So that is... We'll call that okay. We'll call that okay. Uh, and same here uh, when I dump this fuel out that seems to be in order and now let's get these fairings back on here so that's 22,000 up there and this is this costs much more in relation to the rest of the vessel than it did previously and when I dump the fuel out the whole stage still costs 33,000 and I'm sure if we took a let, well let's just uh, make sure that the tank is getting the proper price so let me just get the, a similar tank okay that is that's the same size okay and if I take this off put this on okay that is 34,000 and without fuel it's still 26,000. Okay. So that is our our situation. It looks good. The question is whether this will work now. Now we are under a new version of KSB. We've got new version of FAR, new version of daily reentry. So this could be bad. Okay, here it is. Let Kerbal Joint Reinforcement do its thing. Throttle up. SAS is on, and we'll, we'll use Smart ASS to try and control it. Now, in stock, we now have aerodynamics, so I've gotten a little bit of practice not flipping out, though, frankly, with a, with a 
rocket like this, there shouldn't be any flipping out. So, yeah, we seem to be a little bit off from vertical, aren't we? And obviously right now I'm very attentive to such things. Uh, I guess we'll go with it. Let's see. Let me have Smart ASS take control here. Whoa, 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 what? Oh, um... Oh, okay. Uh, that was unexpected. Um, uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, Okay. Um all right. Let's 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 fix this up. Okay, repair for 64,000. Please remove them. Okay, so let's uh recover what pieces we have left there. Sorry for not trying to save it, but uh I was just caught by a little, a little bit by surprise there. Okay, that's that's all fixed, and it didn't require me to move my flag, though my flag seems to be okay. It sits back there. Okay, uh, let's go to VAB and see what we can do here. Okay, let's take a closer look at how these things are clustered on the thrust plate multi adapter. They are pretty darn close to each other. They are overlapping. I hate to make this body any wider. It's going to be a pretty fat rocket as it is. Okay, let me just replace this thrust plate multi adapter because maybe it's buggy because it's from I mean it's got code from the old version or at least config from the old version. Uh-oh. I think there's general bugginess here. Huh. Is there an alternative for us? Well, we've got this stack octo adapter. But that's for a tiny thing. Well, I think there's a larger version. Well, they fit, they fit, fit all right. But will it overheat? Well, they wouldn't overheat if I was at 5 meters. Uh, let's get MacJub to help out here. We're at too low a thrust rate. We'd have to be shorter than this. No, I don't. I don't like going squat. Let's let's try this first. I should switch out the engines. I want the gimbling ones on the outside. I'll have a LVT30 on the inside. Okay. Well, we'll try this. Sparrow 9.1, right? That, that That's a traditional way to go, right? Okay, and hopefully this won't blow up. But we better be a little bit more prepared for if it does. Oh, I seem to have propped it up way above the launch pad this time. Um, oh, well, I'm going to leave it like that. FMRS should be armed. I made a mistake in turning it off, I think last time. Okay, here we go. Let's hope it doesn't explode on us again. Okay, tower clear. Still reading a little bit off from center. Might be our controller. Uh, that's a little bit weird. Uh, okay, well, let's let's tone back the thrust just a little bit. Why is prograde tilted like that? 
That is intensely annoying. Okay, going to 88. This is the test. I'm not getting a sanguine feeling about this. This is... Prograde isn't really following. Have to go to 85. Really on the edge of uh, of that. This is very steep, the way we're going right now. Now it should be steep because we're going to be trying a boost back and recovery, but this is pushing it a little bit. Still not sure why we're ending up with a 2.7 degree inclination out of nowhere. You know what? I think it's the claw. I think it's the claw somehow. I've heard bad things about the claw. Not sure though. I think I'll let go at uh, 30 kilometers. Okay, I want to reserve the rest of the fuel. That's probably pushing it already. Okay, I'm gonna shut down, separate. Uh, oh, shoot. Okay. Uh, I don't want to stage both the fairings and the stage at the same time. Let me separate those out. Alright. Uh, light. Light. And thrust. And let us go to a pitch of 40. Even 35. Thirty. And I think we can dump the fairings. Oh, this is going a little bit more like I wanted, though, um... Though again, the inclination gap was was weird. So we'll catch up with the separated stage after we get this to orbit, obvious, obviously. Who? All right. Well, that's that's one relief. At least we'll we'll get this mission to orbit. Okay, sort of a proper ascent profile for this stage, at least. Let's actually extend the solar panels. Oh, ooh, okay. I think it is the claw. I think the claw is uh, not happy with the way I've placed it. Tried not to clip it, but I think it thinks it's been clipped. I think it's those small propellant tanks. Okay, right, not T. I want one. Okay, well, that's a problem. Because if we use this to attach the asteroid to the station, that might cause bugginess. It just gets this little jitter. Then again, if that's sort of transferred onto the station, who knows. I'm going to let this stage re-enter. I'll have the, the payload complete its orbit. We'll still have some space junk. Uh, this stage in particular is going to end up as space junk. Don't be fooled by the Delta V reading. We've got uh, reverse mounted LV-1Rs on the, on the final clamp. Okay, this is in orbit. Let's try and jump back to our stage here. I hope the game will not crash on me. We are about to find out. Okay, the retro burn just finished. And I'm going to let it coast up as much as possible so that we can do the boost back burn in the thinnest atmosphere. But uh, maybe we can flip to the right direction here. I, I sort of liked how MacJeb's landing guidance did. So let's just move that off to the side there. Show landing prediction. Anyway, let's see. Let's make what adjustments we can. Let me start now.
Okay, um, that's as good as that's gonna get. Um, should I be picky about it? Let me quickly try and see if I can... No, okay, that's worse, so the other way. Okay, well, that's all I'm gonna do. We'll have to do further refinement later. I need more practice on this, that's for sure. But I don't want to waste all my fuel here. From here on out, I can just use sight. Don't want to use the air brakes too early, otherwise I'm going to end up in the water. Okay, now I can use air brakes. And I think the new version of FAR will be better off with this. You can see I think I'm much slower right now than I was in the previous version of FAR. At this point. Clouds are sort of obscuring my ability to see where the heck I'm landing. Okay, we're right on the coast again. Maybe right at the end of the runway. Okay, I'm gonna put landing gear down. Yeah, this is much smoother. So far, new version of FAR, much better. There was something wrong with the way things were before. I think I I can reserve much less fuel than I have uh, than I have here. Okay, uh, let's make sure, I should make sure that I've got the RCS on so that these these Werner engines can keep it stable if it's on a slant. Is it, is this, this is all bumpier than I seem to remember it, isn't it? I don't know. I don't land on this side very much. I know somebody said that 1.0 is bumpier, but this isn't 1.0, obviously. The save definitely cannot be imported into 1.0, let me tell you that right now. So we had 670 meters per second left over here. I'm not saying that some landings might not require a little bit more than I used. Probably it would. Um, but let's say, I mean, 200 more is fine. We could probably go a little bit higher than we did this time. Okay, anyway, let's recover this, and uh, probably FMRS will crash on that, but I'll restart and then we'll continue with the mission. Okay, so FMRS did crash, but uh, on entering the save, I saw that the, the little uh, stage is still on the beach. So we'll recover it after we transfer this over to Minmus. Uh, FMRS automatically jumped me to this after just briefly showing me the normal start screen, you know, with the KSC there. So, yep, let's get on with a Minmus transfer for this. Okay, that looks good. Uh, no inclination change necessary. We're burning out of our descending node, off-plane transfer, and a pretty good periapsis on the Minmus end. So, the glitchiness of the of the claw might be a problem. You, uh, you can see a, sort of a twitchy progress we're making here and I think there is some claw twitchiness. I'm not going to attach uh, the asteroid to the station with this uh, until I get some comments from viewers on whether this is a good idea or not. Maybe I need to redesign this little little uh, claw docking port thing before I try and attach it to the station, just for safety's sake. But maybe it's alright. Uh, 
just tell me what your experiences are with this. Technically, the these things aren't clipping the claw. They shouldn't be. Nor is the probodobodyne, which is what's underneath it. But I can't really see the collision boxes on these things. And maybe it's such that there is something going on there. Certainly every time we come out of time warp, we get that sort of thing going on. Where are you going? Hey! Don't make me turn on RCS on you. Wow, it's just deviating all on its own. Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, anyway, I do have RCS, so we can fix this quickly. And let's let, let's burn. Let's use gimbling to control this. Clearly, the probodobodyne's own torque isn't enough to quell the the issues with the claw. Yeah, even the gimbling on the LV909 isn't enough. I think I will let Smart ASS handle this after all. One thing I did add to this install, and uh, I probably shouldn't have because of the RAM and all, but I did, was Asteroid Recycling Technologies from RoverDude. So that was one of the colonization related Rover Dude mods that I did not add in previously in the .25 install that I have now. But it seemed like a good idea considering we're wrangling asteroids we should be able to exploit them, right? But clearly, if I want to use FMRS, I'm going to need to cut some stuff out. Because the the thing with FMRS is it's it, it sort of needs quite a big chunk of RAM in order to proceed with what it needs to do. Uh, jumping from one craft to another and all that. And it's that big chunk of RAM that causes it to crash. When I try to switch from either the main mission to the stage I want to recover or from the stage I want to recover back to the main mission. Uh, that is why it crashes. So this new system with the Sparrow 9 obviously requires FMRS. That doesn't mean I'm abandoning the idea of uh, systems that bring the whole stage back down from orbit, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, single stage to orbit and then bring it all back down. That is something I'm still working on and I will continue to work on. We do have the Maximus and other stages that do a very good job of that. The, even the original Sparrow, of course. Okay, 700 kilometers is fine. I'm not bothered. This thing is just continually rotating. Okay, it's auto-saving. Okay, just stop, 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 stop. Wow, this just not much... Uh, Gimbal authority, uh, not gimbal authority, um, torque. Let me let it stabilize for a sec. I really don't care where it stabilizes. This is fine. We'll get an even better approach. Oh, not with a moon encounter, please. Okay, that will do. Let me let, uh, push it along its way for a little bit so that it's not in an electric charge situation. All right. We'll catch up with this uh, later on. Let me get back to KSC to retrieve that stage. Oh no, it disappeared. It was right there when I jumped to... That's not fair. No message. Uh, I saw... It, what, so when I came in to the save, I saw it there, but then FMRS took me to the mission. But now it's gone. So I don't know if, I don't think we got the funds back. I don't know. Okay, so, well, anyway. The point is that the system was successful. Yep, I would definitely say the system worked out the way it was supposed to. FMRS, on the other hand, not so much. So that is the downside to using this sort of system and mainly why I haven't been doing it as much. But uh, that, that 
I I I take uh, take some solace that the system actually worked out this time the way it should have, and I think we can build upon that and also do other recoverable stages in the future. That's basically been the main theme of this. Either we uh, it's about the bases and all the stuff going on on the outside and getting supplies to them and all that. Or it's about uh, just figuring out how to recover these things and creating new recoverable designs. So this is a new design and it does work and yeah I can be satisfied with that. So for now uh, this is how colonization is in point nine zero. Give me your thoughts. Uh, we will proceed with the mission to dock up the asteroid in the next episode as well as other things. We've got actually uh, one thing I want to bring up here. Oh, Kerbal Alarm Clock is there. Okay, so we still got that other asteroid coming in. And I've got ambient light adjustment. I should have that there. Uh, but ambient light adjustment is a thing. So, yeah. Where did that go? Okay, I'm getting distracted. So, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.